What's going on, everybody? Bobby Five on the Man Energy Table. We're going to be talking through Saturday's NFL slate, the monster, the big slate this week, because we have the big, the big NBA days uh, the next day. So it's this is going to be a lot of fun, man. Like I, it's a, this is a, I, I have a lot of stuff going on this weekend, obviously, but this is a, this is a, a fun, a fun weekend to be to be playing some fantasy sports, and uh, there's a, there's a lot of stuff happening. So this should be a fun one on Saturday. And I'm sorry I'm not going to be available for live, but we're going to we're going to go through uh, with all my takes right now. So I'm going to put up. By the way, I'm going to put up just so so it's out there. I'm going to put up something for Sunday. I have to look at it still. Just yeah. so everybody's got a little something before before that. I'll put up something on the three game slate before before Sunday. But this is going to be this is the main slate. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, all right. Well, let's get into it. All right. You got your screen coming up there. And this is kind of cool because this is later than we usually do it. So we have a little bit more news than we usually do, but not yeah. exactly at live, you know? So right. it's, uh, you know, we got all kinds of weather and all kinds of weather that could be pump fakes. You know what I mean? Like, like the weather is a weather's a, like funny business, you know? Uh, everybody was last week. Everybody was expecting the big Buffalo blizzard didn't happen, you know, um, until, until the fourth quarter, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, there's there's some there's some key games here that are probably avoiding the weather for the most part. That you know, I, I think I don't want to get too fancy. You know what I mean? I don't want to say, boy, I know that that that's going to be a quagmire in Cleveland, and I know that it's going to be snow, and you're not going to be able to do anything. But but Christian Olave is out, so why don't I just go 100 percent uh, X Y Z for New Orleans? You know, like I, I don't know. I don't know if that's the. Uh, I think some some if it, to some degree you want to respect the weather. I'm not sure. Um, okay. I guess we'll just kind of go through it. Yeah, let's let's go. Let's get into it. Um, it's 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 going to be an interesting an interesting one. Um, first up, we have uh, you have Houston, Tennessee, right? Yeah, uh, Derrick Henry is a good play. <laughs> I think he is too. I'm a little the 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 the, the point projection. I, I actually am surprised he's not even like showing up more than he is. I, he's showing up. Don't get me wrong, but like they you know this looks like you know they've got McCaffrey ahead of them I, I think that this is a pretty good spot to play Derrick Henry um I also think you could make a weird like stack on the other side which I mentioned to you as, as a way something earlier until I saw that Malik Willis was starting at quarterback so that's gonna get me off of my my other stack thing that was like I was gonna say Burks and a con um I just don't think I can do it with Malik Willis at quarterback uh it's just just tough for me to get there um, but yeah, this game is pretty much Derrick Henry or Chris Moore and Chris Moore or Aikens on the other side. If there's no Brandon Cooks, and no, Brandon that's the thing. There is that's the thing I was going to mention. That there, I think there is a Brandon Cooks. I think so too, probably. Yeah, and if there's a Brandon Cooks, then there then there's a Brandon Cooks. You know, like uh, Brandon Cooks at forty nine hundred is, is 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 really really cheap. Um, uh, and I haven't heard too much about this. Uh, Again, this is uh, it's it's probably a good game strip, but it's not that great. I mean, it's like it's a three and a half point spread. Uh, you expected it to be more, but now with no Tannehill, whatever. Um, I, I think Cooks is pretty reasonable here, you know. So um, that's the other thing I wanted to mention. I, I was trying to invent a reason to play Houston stacks, just because of the listen Tennessee is whatever, but they're a good team. But you could throw against them, and with Cooks back, I don't know, maybe. Uh, Maybe maybe invent some reason to play Davis Mills with uh, with Cooks and, and Chris Moore, uh, and run it back with Henry. Um, maybe not the most sound idea, but uh, that's the thing I came up with. Um, the other thing about the Tennessee is um, uh, you could argue the following: you know, Houston for whatever it is has been it's just uber scrappy. Okay, they they they, they took ten they took Kansas City to overtime. They took uh, uh, Dallas to the final stretch, you know, whatever it is. And Malik Willis is starting for Tennessee. And if you're Houston, I mean, aren't you going to put like 37 guys in the box against Derrick Henry? Um, I don't know if it matters because they're just the worst of all time against the run. But <laughs> maybe. Yes, I guess. Um, but I, I I, definitely see, I don't want to say bus path. I I. I do see high ownership bus pass for him. I do. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I still have him as the best play. I like that. Um, so yep. for me, it's going to be Henry, obviously. And then I might take a shot at Brendan Cooks on, on the Houston. I actually forced him in 
to 10% of my lineups in my most recent build. Yeah, I think that, that that's completely reasonable. Um, and, uh, you know, there. Are, I think that the one thing that's interesting, though, is I, I don't think that Cooks is that much better of a play than Chris Moore. Like, I actually think Chris Moore has got some things about him that there, there, there's some NFL people that like him a lot, actually. Um, so, I, you know, I, I think that both of those guys are. are can, 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 I, can I do this? Can I play Davis Mills with both those receivers? I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> um, yeah, I just ask him. I mean, you know, the price thing is, is it was sort of what was tempting me on the Tannehill on the other side. So I guess I can't criticize it for sure. Um, kind of a shame to, to waste Traylon Burks if he's back this week, because I would like to see him with a real guy who's going to throw the ball. Uh, I actually think that if you're taking him just at their value, I think there's probably just as good of a chance that that um, Malik Willis outscores uh, Davis uh, Mills. Davis Mills. He's because at least he can run. And, and again, they can't stop the run. That's that's also another bust patch for for Henry is that you have a running quarterback now against a team that can't stop the run. So maybe maybe he steals a touchdown or something. I don't know. That'd be um, awesome. Henry is is the priority though, and then the other guys are all fringy to me. All right, Atlanta and Baltimore. Um, Sheets, why don't you start off with this one? I pass. I mean, I mean, we we well, you do have one thing. I mean, you have Duvernay, who's who's uh who is going to injured reserve. So these, uh, I guess DeMarcus Robinson is going to look like a good play at 4K. Um, I guess that's, I guess that's the end of my analysis. I mean, I, I like DeMarcus Robinson. Uh, on the Atlanta side, I'm not going to play Tyler Algier. I don't want to play Patterson at 5,800. Drake London, 4,800. Good price. Um, yeah, I guess. So, you know, there's, there's some other cheap receivers too. We'll put them in for now. So I'll put in uh, right now the DeBarcus Robinson, Drake London, one v one mini stack to get, keep this kind of like this this kind of lineup going. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and and I know it's been a while, man, and I know it seems crazy, but like uh, I can't resist the Mark Andrews at 5,500. Um, I'm gonna do that, especially against the Atlanta team that's I think the fourth worst in the NFL against tight ends. I'm going to take that chance. Um, unfortunately, the other tight ends have actually been pretty well incorporated into this passing game for, for Baltimore. But I think that's my favorite, my favorite play. I, I think, it, you, you know, look, I think you definitely can make an argument for J.K. Dobbins here, but he's just looked like he's played on one leg. And it's hard to run on, on Baltimore. I have no idea why Cordell Patterson is more expensive and projecting for more than Algier. Uh, it's pretty clear to me that they're turning it over to Algier. I don't know what's going on with that um he's their guy like they're gonna they're gonna keep riding him i think so may, maybe you could talk me into it but i i think this is mostly a cross up with the exception of i think london's okay and i think that uh mark andrews is a guy who i'm definitely going to be overweight on because of it's just he's it, it's too big of a tight end for him to be 50 it's, i know he's been terrible and i know it's huntley and i know all that stuff i still think he's uh he's in a good, a good spot here and i'm going to play some of them can we pause this for just a second? Yep, no problem. Hello? All right, so we were just about to get over to Detroit and Carolina. Yeah, so, you know, it's uh, – I was going to dismiss this game, um, but then Adam was was was, was asking me in, in Discord the other day, it's like, is Detroit that much worse on, on the road, not in the Dome? And then I started to say, well, Carolina's defense is pretty good, but then I'm like, oh, is it really? Um, so – I'm starting to warm up to this game a little bit. I'm just not getting to it as much just because I have better games, but I can't really argue with it. I mean, like, for example, I, I, I made builds on Yahoo and FanDuel and DraftKings. Like DeAndre Swift is actually my highest owned player on, on Yahoo somehow. Um, uh, so I, I, I kind of like this, I guess, a little bit. I mean, you have Goff and what's his name? St. Brown. You finally get the maybe and not, St. Brown, and it's not chalk. And then you got DJ Moore kind of on the other side. Um, even Terrence Marshall is not the worst punt in the world. I, I, just, I don't think I'm getting to these until I get to like my 100th lineup, though. That's the thing. Um, so I wouldn't make either of these teams much of a priority. Yeah, I mean, DJ Moore, is. it's really weird how the ownership works with him because like he's like 1%, 2% every week, and then all of a sudden he'll be like 25%. You know, I know it's a matchup based and all that stuff, but it's just kind of weird, like – you know, I've been trying to deal with this all year long. Um, and this game feels like it could be stackable. It's not good weather, but there's bad weather everywhere. So yep. 
it, it's, it, you know, maybe, maybe it's not as bad as, you know, when you take it from that perspective, but I, I like, uh, I, I can't play golf in an outdoor game, like period, much less in game where it's bad weather. Like, so the one thing that's weird about him is that for some reason it, for his production, he actually should have been more expensive by now, but whatever. Um, I think DeAndre Swift is, is okay. And I think DJ Moore is my favorite play on the other side. I think both the running backs are going to get a lot of work for Carolina here. It's a good matchup, really, really hard to know how that's going to shake out. So I'm, I'm having a hard time getting to, getting to them. I don't mind the Terrence Marshall idea as a, as a, as a cheapo. Um, I actually, it's a pretty good idea to play one of one of Moore or Marshall. And, you know, it's probably important to remind people that while they're going to run the ball a ton, they actually have a, a guy who can actually play quarterback throwing them the ball rather than um, what they've had for most of the season in Carolina. So it is a boost to all the receivers in that sense. Uh, Amon Ra as, as a chalky play feels like a really weird chalky play to me at 7,800. But he's a, you know, he's great in general. They're going to find ways to get him involved, even in short passing games. So, even if I'm not playing golf, I will have a little bit of St. Brown. Um, but I feel like he's a, he's a little bit over projected this week, is what I would say. Buffalo, these- Ch- Buffalo but- Chicago is 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 one of the two really bad, really legit bad weather games. Yeah. Um, uh, I think that both quarterbacks are kind of like elite you know no no stack plays i think between fields and allen i think both of them could rush for two touchdowns um just the way the game is going to fly you know what i mean like uh i don't think there's going to be much much in the way of of, of deep passing or anything like that um i think these guys are just going to just 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 roll i don't know that's that's the way i'm looking at it um and i think optimized are not going to get to any of them because of the lack of stacking options you know so i think that both those guys by themselves are, are good plays and and I imagine that, that David Montgomery is going to probably be a decent play also for the same the same reasons. Um, just just not a lot of passing, I think, in this game. So uh, I, I'm going to force that stuff in because, again, the way I usually play and use Sabres and whatever, I wouldn't get to that otherwise. So I'm going to make sure I get a decent amount of my lineups with, with Justin Fields by himself and uh, some with Justin Al- and with uh, Josh Allen by himself as well. Yeah, that's an interesting th- thing about this week. I actually completely agree with you. Um, I, I probably would try to force in one of the values just with them, just because, just in case, you know what I mean? Like, and they're, and they're so cheap on the Chicago side. Like, it's just, it feels wrong, but like, I would, I will, I would probably, I'll probably throw Brian Byron Pringle into a lineup or I'll throw Cole Komet into a lineup with Fields because I am going to take a shot on both these quarterbacks running in this kind of weather. And I think that's a reasonable take to have. I'm a little concerned that Chicago is not going to shut down Fields, but they're probably not going to want him with design runs as much this time of the year in this matchup and the, the temperature, you don't want to get this guy hurt when he's your whole future. And he's finally got something to be excited about. So yeah, not really interested in any of the individual plays um, from the receivers, but I do like both quarterbacks, which is really, really strange. <laughs> um, all right. What do we got next? Uh, New Orleans. Well, then, then what could be the worst of all of them actually, yep. as far as the weather goes. New Orleans. I mean, this is like a, I don't even know if you could play anybody from this thing. Well, this is a quagmire and it's kind of like, it's kind of weird because it's a, it's a game where otherwise, I mean, you'd have Chris Olave out and Jarvis Landry got moved to the injury reserve, injured reserve list. Yep. So you have the most expensive wide receiver that's eligible to play at 3,500 for what for, for New Orleans, you know, yep. you have a, uh, Rashid Shahid, then then Traquan Smith and, and Marquise Callaway. When they do run passing plays, those are the three guys that are gonna be out there, I imagine. You know, so um it's just it's just hard. It's hard to get them the ball in, in yeah. this weather. So um I, I have, I'm gonna have to figure out whether what I'm gonna do. If I if I spike get to one of them or two of them or not in the same lineup, but maybe like like you were making a case for for a couple of the Chicago yeah. GPs. I mean New Orleans, I mean, it's going to be so hard to get there, but 3K, you get one touchdown somehow. You know, it's probably mm-hmm. might be good enough. Um, and then, you know what? You, you have Traquan Smith and one of these dudes in the freaking weather, you throw him a little freaking screen pass out to the – then you break one tackle, and then that's the end of the slate. You know what I mean? That's that's that's, right. that's, that's possible also. Um, on the Cleveland side uh, – Deshaun Watson is going to have a miserable time. He's had a miserable time in, in good weather. Um, so can't imagine anything else. Uh, you have Amari Cooper's actually playing. I thought it'd be a good opportunity for him to just sit. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't want to play in this crap. Um, yep. 
I guess Nick Chubb and Alvin Kamara, the two running backs, would be the way to go, right? Um, so if I played anybody from this game, I guess it would be either Kamara or Chubb or, you know, maybe one of those New Orleans darts. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I think that it's, 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 it's for me, it's Kamara or Chubb. Um, I think Juwan Johnson is in play. I yeah. don't like that they raised his price. This guy has seven. T- How many other t- tight ends have seven touchdowns in the last seven weeks? And yet no one talks about him every week. He's always misprojected. Um, he had two touchdowns last week. He's had two, multi, two multi-touchdown games. This, like, that's unusual for cheap tight ends. I guess that's kind of the only other play in this game. I just think that, you know, and then, of course, both defenses are firmly in play. Um, that's pretty much all I got. The only thing I would say about the defense I think Jason Hill is probably going to get more snaps than Andy Dalton. I don't think that's going to affect us, though. The only thing I would say about the defenses is that I don't, there's, it's not as big of a ceiling in games like this um, just because there's going to be like 20 total pass, pass attempts um, in the game. Um, so uh, I don't think there's going to be a lot of pick sixes or sacks or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be, be a low-scoring yeah. game where the winning – you know, defense in this game maybe gets nine points or something like that. Um, right. <laughs> you know, it's possible. No, that's, a good, that's, a, that's actually a good point. Um, although if Taysom Hill is there, even if they're running the ball mostly, a couple of uh, – it's not like he can throw the ball. If they if, if anybody gets any sort of a lead, that's when you could maybe maybe get some right. activity right. from the defense. But, yeah, I hear you. Um, I wish Joan Johnson was still 3K. Uh, <laughs> I do think that he's interesting. All right, next we have Seattle KC, which is an uh, ugly weather, but like not not bad to affect the game. There's no wind really, just really cold. <laughs> um, this is uh, pretty clearly the game to stack, right, Sheets? There are three of them, I think, um, okay. and this is one of them. Uh, C- Seattle KC, I mean, you just a uh, couple, couple of points. Uh, number one, Kenneth Walker is playing, I imagine. Uh, Kenneth Walker is playing. Noah Fant is likely to play. Uh, and you have Tyler Lockett is out uh, moving Marquise Goodwin straight up into the number two uh, receiver role. Uh, so all of Seattle is in play right, f- right from the get-go. All those guys that I just mentioned. Um, yep. On the Kansas City side, uh, fade Derek McKinnon at your own risk. Okay? The guy is just, you know what I mean? Like, it's, he's, it's a million fantasy points every game. And, and, you know, Kansas City wants to win, and and if you're going to get a kind of shootout situation, he's going to be getting the ball. That's the way it is. Um, the other thing I'd point out on Kansas City is that McCall Hardman is back. Um, so, number one, I'm going to force in probably 10% of McCall Hardman. Uh, and the other thing is it makes the other, you know, renders the other guys a little little less viable uh, just because he is, uh, he is back. But I do like uh, Joe, uh, Smith-Schuster. Kelsey's very, very difficult to play uh, at this price, but sometimes you just have to. FanDuel is like 11K or so. He's like some ridiculous number on FanDuel. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, this is a very, very stackable game, and it's one, one, of the, one of my top targets, to say the least. Yeah, I, I don't even have, like, I, I could name literally every player as being a good play in this game. I think Kenneth Walker is a good play. I think on the other side, both running backs, because there is a path where they can run the ball on Seattle and they're playing from ahead and Pacheco gets the, all the, all the McKinnon stuff and he's going to be lower owned, I think than McKinnon. So both of the running backs firmly in play, I'll probably be splitting them up and I'll probably have them in a good portion, maybe even up, up to like half of my lineups. I mean, I really am high on this, this whole game and I'm okay to eat a little bit of chalk and find some creative plays elsewhere as always in football. And by the way, been a weirdly chalk hitting year for football um, more than, more than I can remember it. I, I, everybody's there for me. I, the priority, I guess, would be the Kelsey Mahomes. Um, I don't, you can go the other side of it, too. I mean, I, I really just like everything in this game. This is my number one target. Uh, I'm not going to be crazy overweight on all of the, the – I guess I'll be overweight because I'll have probably like 10%-ish of the of the other receivers in, in KC and maybe 15 or 20 of Juju. But the main play is Kelsey there. And what you said was a really good point about Marquise Goodwin being the, the true second wide receiver. They don't tend to involve a lot of third wide receivers in Seattle in general. Um, but that means that we get to play Noah Fan for 3,400. So all of it looks pretty good to me, man. Um, I'm on board with it. And this is an important game for Seattle. 
It's an important game for Mahomes to win the MVP. And for what it's worth, Mahomes' number one target for touchdowns anyway has been Jarek McKinnon. <laughs> like, if you want to punt, by the way, um, the, uh, there's another guy from Seattle who, um, who's I think minimum cost, mm -hmm. uh, and I forget his name. This guy, uh, Derek Young, um, he was supposedly a really good rookie, um, and if there was a time to play him, it would be now, I guess. And he's only three K, so it's 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 possible. It's probably probably showdown or no nothing, but you know uh, that's uh, worth uh, mentioning. Yeah. I figured I, I figured I'd mention it. So that way, that way, when the one the one person who hears this that does play him and they win, that way at least you get the shout out. <laughs> Something like that. Um, but uh, uh, I think two of the other three games are in the final four uh, that we're going to go over. And one of them is right here is, is Giants Minnesota. Um, this you're getting good weather in this game, and and yeah. you're getting good you're getting good skill guys on the Minnesota side and real cheap skill guys on the Giants side, which which is uh which makes it uh. Which which makes it a pretty easy game to to, to target, you know. Um, on the Giants side, first you have you know Slayton and and Richie James, both really really cheap, and and you can Minnesota has shown you can they've given up points to much worse teams. They give um, up points to everybody. <laughs> yeah, they give it to everybody, and and you know, and the Giants are part play. You know, listen, they're 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 like eighty percent to make the playoffs, and winning this game puts it at ninety eight percent. You know, yeah. they're you're getting Giants best game, whatever that means. You know. Um, uh, and on the Minnesota side, uh, I will say this, that, uh, you know, they, 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 they're going to try to put the pedal to the middle too. I mean, they don't want to have to go down 30 to nothing every game, you know? So, so they have, you know, Jefferson and, and Cook and, 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 you know, and the guy who had the big game last week, I don't know if, you know, I'm going to target him that much, but I guess him and Thielen, I guess would make equal. Then there's Hawkinson. The one thing I would say from a football perspective, I mean, you can look at it one of two ways is the, the matchup between the Giants and Minnesota carries with a little bit of variance in that the Giants play a lot of man-to-man. -man. They just send everybody, and, and they play a lot of man-to-man. -man. And that's a, that's a high-variance situation, you know what I mean, if you play Minnesota. Number one, uh, if you fade Minnesota, and then you're giving up one-on-one -on -one coverage to just Justin Jefferson and these guys, that, that, that could be a world of hurt. Yeah, if you're playing a chalky Minnesota – there, there, are, there are scheme paths that are not very favorable to Minnesota in this spot. You know, they they project to be the best, but and the weather's really good, but uh, but they're, they're Minnesota ain't ever no lock. Let's put it that way. Oh. Um, but uh, listen, it all makes sense uh, to, to play the Jeffersons and one of the other three receivers. Even Dalvin Cook's fine, and those two cheapos for the Giants certainly make sense. And, and I actually like Barkley as well. Barkley was. Really doing some doing some damage in, his, in in the last game when they were running out that uh, running out that game against Washington and like you said Minnesota gives up uh, gives up stuff to everybody so um, this is again pretty obvious game but I, I you know with with the lack of weather and anything else I I can't ignore it or fade it completely yeah something feels wrong with playing chalky Giants receivers ever um, but it's hard not to have some interest <laughs> you know what I mean like they're cheap. And it feels like an interesting stack. Um, I kind of like the idea of, of the, the Daniel Jones, and he's going to be really popular. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, and then you're going to get, you know, the, Barkley will have some ownership, but it is interesting because you have Henry and McCaffrey who are both in good spots. So yeah. how, how do we how do we rate him? I guess he's a little beneath those guys, but it's a great – it's a good matchup. We want to expose him to the game. I like – you know, and again, I, have, I don't have like a – I'm going to have some Dalvin Cook lineups. I'm going to have some Jefferson lineups. The one guy who I'm probably not playing is Adam Thielen. I think that Adam Thielen is, is now their third receiver. Um, and I think that it's been, it's been happening for a little while now. And we're sort of, we don't look at it because he gets, he has a touchdown upside because they, they do look for him near the, near the, the goal line. But I, I don't, he just doesn't, he doesn't, he's not fast anymore. He's not creating great separation. And KJ Osborne has some real is, is like like can really burn. And also he's, you know, he had 16 targets. I know that was a weird game, but like even in the first half, he was having a good game when they when nobody else was. And and, I, and then you want to get into some Hawkinson as well. I think this is just another really good game stack that I sort of like all the pieces of. And I think that's your, that, that's gonna end up being your cores are the Philadelphia uh game and then these two games, and then you you find other pieces you can you can use uh to fill in elsewhere. But that, that's that's the cores of those three games, right? Chiefs? I, I I agree with that. We'll get to Dallas in a minute, but but first we'll go to Cincinnati, New England, where um 
you have another pretty really kind of an elite running back play. You know, I, I like Ramondre Stevenson again. Um, uh, I'm not really – as much as you should probably always get a little bit of the Cincinnati offense just because they can always just just do stuff. Um, this this weather's no bargain. It's going to be freaking freezing up there, and and, and uh, New England's defense is tough. And I, I'll probably get a, a couple of lineups with them, you know, the, the just in case. This borough always can be just in case, you know. Um, yeah. I'm not going to go back to the New England passing game, though. I'm not going to play Myers or anybody like that. It's, me, it's probably just going to be Ramondre Stevenson. Yeah, I like Stevenson as well. Um, trying to decide what I want to do. That I, I do think that I'm, I mean, just just I think it's always good to have have a Cincinnati stack, like you said. I, I just think I'm going to do it. Um, and you know, whether you want to do it with Chase alone, whether you want to do it with Chase and Boyd, it's hard to do with Chase and Higgins. Um, I think that it's all very, very viable and added to the fact that they don't really have a tight end that they, they, they're going to, like they have no tight end projected for more. What, what is their projection? The, the highest, uh, the highest tight end projection on, on Saberson is 0.84 points, <laughs> which is Mitchell Wilcox. That's, I've never seen that before with a team that has nobody projected to score a fantasy point at a position. Uh, <laughs> uh, mix that just means uh, I guess you know you get you get you get a little bit of mix in you get a little bit of Stevenson and then you make a couple stacks of the passing game from Cincinnati but um, certainly not as enticing as it is at other weeks. Uh, New England's a pretty good defense. Uh, the weather's not great, although it doesn't have a ton of wind, so not not you know not horrible. And then I just I I, I do think that I would I would consider throwing Jacoby Myers into a lineup, although it is kind of like. This guy just cost me a fucking sorry, a freaking fortune. Um, I'm a little bitter about it. Maybe maybe I try to get the money back this week with him. <laughs> not not the right not a, not a great way of analyzing DFS stuff, but it is it is it did run through my mind when I was doing my early builds. Um, yeah, I, I I think it's I think you stated it perfectly. I think it's you get some stacks of it, and that's pretty much it. So you have two games at four o'clock. <laughs> one one is going to be played by everybody, and one's going to be played by nobody. Right. So, so, so Washington, San Francisco is a, is a low total. Nobody projects well, except for McCaffrey. Right. So I think McCaffrey is going to be, you know, I don't know who's going to be high roll between him and Henry. I think it's, I think it's going to be close. Like when I was running my stuff, I was getting more Henry, excuse me, more McCaffrey than Henry for some reason. Um, I think Saberson, the, Saberson projection on McCaffrey is crazy. Like it's, he's going to, they have met almost 50% ownership. I think. Yeah, but remember, it's their their ownership projection. That's the, the way Saberson works is weird. Like they their ownership projection is based on their projection. Oh, yeah. You know right. what I mean? Right. Um, so th- listen, I mean, I, I'm building this stupid lineup right here, and obviously you don't have to play Davis Mills or all the stuff I'm I'm doing here. But on on this slate, I mean, there's enough cheapos between the Giants and this other stuff where you can play both these guys, and it's really weird, you know, like for like the first twelve weeks of the season. Like all we want to do is play 5k running backs. Right. And we just yeah. wouldn't play anybody over 5k pretty much or 5,500. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden now you get like the two studs that you could just play like with relative impunity. I'm not relative impunity, but you remember you have those weather. I'm like, what, 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 what receiver do you really need? There's no Tyreek Hill in the, in the, in the, in the nice weather. You know, there's no lion stacks at home. You know, there's the best thing you can come up with is like, you know, you get into Justin Jefferson. You know, he's, he's the guy that will get you know, probably, or, or, you know, who could get 40 freaking uh, Metcalf can get 40, like, 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 like guys like that. Yeah. Um, but in any case, McCaffrey's a great play, but I, 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 I keep saying I'm going to do this. And then I'm just, I just forget if in fact the one o'clock games are not working out the way I want them to, I'm not going to pout. I'm not going to steam. Okay. I'm just going to take whatever I had from the Dallas Philly, give myself some, I don't know, Brandon Ayuk and George Kittle, you know what I mean? Like, or, or something. Mm-hmm. And, and, and instead of playing McCaffrey, maybe go to, to Pollard or something like that. So, mm-hmm. so, so, so I, I, I'm definitely, to I say it, then I don't do it. I'm definitely going to, going to do that. There are only two games and there's McCaffrey and 0% ownership. Anybody else in this game? Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I'll take a shot on Terry McLaurin. There you um, go. That's something. Passing the ball, coming back. Uh, the guys, I still think one of the best receivers in the NFL uh, just doesn't have the right situation. <laughs> um, 
And as I keep mentioning, I've been I've been waiting for my Johan Johan Dotson games, and and he's 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 finally gotten there the last couple yep. of weeks. So yep, sure has. Maybe you include him as 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 a cheap play. I actually think that's kind of interesting. Um, I think I'm gonna may, maybe even try to prioritize a little a little Dotson. Also, you know, you have some flexibility with you want to if you have him in a few lineups, you can shift over to other guys if you need to in the afternoon. There's not that many. It was only two games, but there's some other. There, you know, if you, if you had to switch some of them over to. Uh, I guess he's not going to get ownership either. So, because I think Juwan Jennings is also in play here. Um, less interested in Ray Ray McLeod. Uh, the only thing I'd say is like, if you're not going to play McCaffrey, shouldn't we be playing some Ayuk? Yeah, hundred percent, absolutely. Yeah. So okay, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud because I, I didn't, I initially didn't get to him, but I, I think I, it's too, it's too typical of me. Sheets. I, I keep playing the guys while, while they're on the way up, and then once they get there. I stopped playing them sometimes. <laughs> well, why don't you go back to your dude from the other day? That you're 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 Kittle and the captain. Why you play Kittle? Why are you play Mark Andrews? Let's go Terrible back to the matchup with for Kittle. This is the team that gives up apps. I don't know if they I think they've given up like one touchdown this year to tight ends. And let's, because let's, of their let's, 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 let's make it three total for the season. The, the, but also their pass rush and Kittle is really just a I mean, he's the best blocking tight end of all time. Right. Uh, they're going to use him in the, in the, in the, in the running game. I think that's as a, as a blocker for the most part, maybe he gets a few routes thrown in there. I just don't think this is the matchup. I want to do it, but I do. I mean, look, you, you, here's my guy. I do like Kittle. <laughs> um, all right. What do you, what do you, what do you like as far as, I mean, de- there's like a billion defenses you can play. Um, do you have any that, that, that stand out for you? Um. I haven't gotten to there. Let's, let's, do you mind if we touch on that at the end? Because I'm we just have the one last Philly game, right? Oh yeah, we didn't get to Philly. Yet. I keep forgetting. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no problem. I'll I'll, I'll jump in there because I, I do have a list, but I, I haven't. All right, so so well, I'll I'll let you I'll let you start with this. Uh, how much does Philly even want to win this game? That's my first hypothesis. Like, what what difference are we really talking about if they lose this game? That's my fear. Which, because I like Devonte Smith, I like AJ Brown, I like Minshew. What is the reason for them to really go full out here? Do you have any? I mean, am I am I, am I, am I overthinking this? Oh no! I mean, they, they well, listen. They they uh, if if they really wanted to go all out, they wouldn't have sat Jalen Hurts. I mean, you know what I mean? Like it's uh, um, and yeah, they could they could so, listen. It's always it's always good to beat Dallas. You know, it's always good to. You know, to uh, to to lock in that one seed, you know, before any n- nasty variance happens, they're certainly going to try. Um, I'm not too worried about the motivation part. Um, I'm, I'm they have the ones. I, I feel like it's locked up, right? Like, oh no, it's not because there's no. three more. I keep forgetting the 17. I mean, it's close. It it is close enough. Um, I guess I'll I guess I'll start then. So no, I, I think you're right. I th- no, but that, that's good enough for me to talk myself back into playing this game because I was trying to find a way to pivot off of it. But I think you're right. I think they ha- I think they would would try to win it with the guys they have. Go ahead, Jesus. Well, I was going to say. I mean, I, we talked about this way early when these lines came out. I was I was asking. I mean, you think the Minshew is going to end up being chalk? And yeah, probably. And, and and I think he is. And 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 I think that there's a a little bit of kind of a like weird recency bias and like the last time that Minshew had to come in and make one of these starts and he, he did a really, really nice job. It was against the freaking Jets, I think, on the road. You know what I mean? It's it ridiculous. And mm-hmm. and listen, whether Philly wants to win or not, or whatever it is, this, this was I, I said in my in my in my video. I I've known Dallas listen, I've been rooting against the Dallas Cowboys since I've been born. Okay. So so I, I know I, I know something about the Dallas Cowboys and and they they might have like terrible coaching. They might have kind of like a weird dysfunctional management and from Jimmy Johnson all the way to the new guy, Jerry Jones or whatever it is. And one thing about Dallas is they have the most, the most incredible egos and pride, like in the freaking world. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and they're coming off that freaking game against Jacksonville and they're at home and they're seeing a Philly team. That's like, so dismissive, like we don't even need to play jail. You know, we're going to sit jail and hurts and tank a game against the, against Dallas pretty much. That's, we're, we're good enough that we're going to play with Gardner Minshew against you guys. I think Dallas is going to beat the crap out of them. Okay. And, right. and, and, and um, if not, it's just going to be because they're just not good. You know what I mean? But I think that they're, you're going to get the full Dallas treatment, whatever that's worth. You know, I think that Philly, you'll get their, you know, you'll get Philly's game, but you're not going to get their best game. I think Dallas, you're getting their best game, wherever it is. Now, listen, they also have, 
They do have some defensive injuries, which was why I wasn't, you know, too heavy on them the last two two games. But I don't know. I've just seen a lot in my life. I think they're getting up for this game. I think they're going to bury Philadelphia. And, and I think that I think that Minshew's chalk is bad. Um, I think that pretty much the Philly side is bad uh, if it's if it's chalky. So for me, I'm going to go the other route though. I will play the Dallas side. Um, I'll play. I'll, I'll play. I don't know who to play running back wise, which is kind of annoying. But I I do know that I want to play Prescott here. Um, I do know that I want to play uh, Lamb. And I want to play one of these one of these other guys, either Gallup or Noah Brown. I'm not even sure which one. And Dalton Schultz. And I'll probably make the wrong decision at running back, um, but probably want to play one or one or one of these guys. Uh, so that's my opinion. I I, I just I'm just not in. I just I'll probably get to maybe a sm- small amount of Philly, but only because I kind of have to. I'm going to be way under the field on this Philly side. Okay, so let me just throw a couple things out about Minshew. Um, first of all, he's played a, a lot of games in his career. It's not like this guy has not played at all. Um, he has the third lowest interception rate of any quarterback over, and it's 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 literally only him, Brady, Rogers. Like there's like it's it's like all of the top quarterbacks from the past, you know, whatever, 15 years or whatever. He's he's number three, so he doesn't turn the ball over. He also does like to air it out, and he plays that you think he would turn the ball over because he looks like a little bit of a gambler. Um, I don't know what to do here, man. Um, I, I do think I would eat a little bit of it, but one way to get off the chalk is really simple is play Quez Watkins. Ooh, uh, there you go. And, and he's getting work, by the way. He's had, you know, five or more targets for consecutive weeks. And that's good enough for me at 3,600 in a game where they're going to be a lot of attention paid to uh, A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. I also don't think the Dallas's D-backs are all that great. Um, I think that they, they're good gambling d- defenders. They're not, you know, shut down corners. So I'm very okay with taking the shots on, on, on these guys. The problem is the ownership, like you mentioned. Um, and then why did we decide now that Noah Brown, like who decided this, that Noah Brown, now that he's, he's really, you know, coming into his own and had two great weeks in a row. And why is he now unowned? <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. So all these cheapos, I guess that's what that's why you can play the expensive run. There's a lot of guys you can yeah. filter in at wide receiver. I mentioned Watkins, I uh, Brown. We talked about Chris Moore or or Cooks earlier as a sort of a different, you know, London. Uh, there, there's just a lot of like weird guys to take shots on. And I think it's kind of a good route to go. I mean, Noah Brown, you know, was awesome. Like like he can he can win you a slate. Um, so I, so I, I I'm gonna have some of this game. I, I do think this is obviously, but it is. I do have it rated below the other two for what it's worth. And I and I and I wouldn't be surprised if, they, if Dallas beats the hell out of them, except for that Philadelphia. Like I said before the season started, and we talked, know. they I just know. have the best players. Like every, I know, <laughs> like all these other all these other positions that nobody knows about. I know, I feel you. I, yeah, like I, the I, only way they they've been slowed down ever is if the other team just has like nine minute drives, and that's. Let me, let me ask you this: is, is is Gardner Minshew any good at handing the ball off to Miles Sanders? That's the thing is that Miles Sanders should be more in play here too. I agree. I agree with that. Like. But it is, I mean, it's not like a great matchup. It's just we just like it because, you know, Hurts. And then it does really help Sanders not to have Hurts there because he, all of a sudden he can get a – you, you're telling me now you're allowed to hand the ball to Miles Sanders with it in the five inside the five-yard line? Because that hasn't happened. Yeah, I'll be – you know what, I'm going to go – I'll end up you – know, you talk me into it. I'll be – not 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 talk me into it. I mean, I'll, I'll be with – I'll probably be with the field on Philly. I mean, that, that I guess that makes sense. Okay, and then and then this is this is not a play that anyone should make. I'm just going to throw this out there. Don't make this play. But I will throw into one of my – I'm not even playing 150, but however many I end up playing, I'm going to throw one lineup in there with Kenneth Gainwell. Because I, I actually think – and it's it, it sort of – one thing, it, 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 this, the script thing sort of lends itself to what you're saying. He does get he does catch balls out of the backfield. It, it, they really do use three running backs there. It's, it's a very long shot, ridiculous that I'm even mentioning it play, but – I'm just telling you right now. I, maybe, you know what I'll do? Maybe I'll throw him into my afternoon slate line. That's probably the better thing to Dude, do. You're, 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 you're telling me that you're going to make a play that no one's supposed to play. And I'm sitting here with this shell lineup with Davis Mills, Chris Moore, <laughs> Bra- Brandon Cooks, and then and then the ultra correlation of Demarcus Robinson and Drake London. And and you're and you're and you're telling me don't tell anybody you're playing Kenneth Gainwell. Okay, we'll see. What that, 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 that is the kind of lineup that could win a tournament, by the way. And this one's going to leave probably two thousand on the table after I put like the the. 
put my defense. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, it is interesting. Let's, let's talk about defenses really quick because we did talk about everything else. So, um, yeah, the, the, the I actually thought the Cowboys were going to be mega chalk at twenty six hundred. I actually think forget the fact that it's Minshew. I actually think at twenty six hundred, I'd be playing them if it was Hurts. I don't see why we wouldn't be playing Dallas at twenty six. They're just they're a talented defense. The defense that, that scores fantasy points because they can pass rush and they can create turnovers. Um, so why why wouldn't we play them at twenty six hundred as one of the teams if they're not going to be more than ten percent owned? I'm totally good with that. I also am happy to play the Bears at two K flat just to get all the savings. Um, and then I I think that the the Chiefs since the Chiefs Saints and and Cleveland are are my next favorite. Yeah, I, I think I might just just put a random number generator. Yep, as as the, 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 the normal Chiefs defense, defense yeah. treatment. The Chiefs is the Chiefs are the are the best like you know uh, value score play. Uh, the Sa- Saints certainly look certainly look fine. You know, um, uh, I think the Saints are the best actually. I'm gonna change my mind. I think the Saints are the best. Yeah, they're the highest owned. It seems as well. Oh really? Um, Okay. I got them at fifteen percent. Yeah, you got them a little higher. Yeah, that's true. And then uh, Dallas at twenty six hundred. The bill, the Bills at four K. Who's going to do that? Hmm, that's interesting. I, I like. I mean, if you can do it, that's actually like they should. You know, they should. In my opinion, they should probably project ahead of Kansas City in terms of total points. Like they, they, they this is a good spot. Like as much as I love Fields, he's, he does turn the ball over and and. Yeah, I mean, he also is going to take some sacks, so I'm 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 okay. By the way, I'm going to tell you this is this is like really sick. Okay, so you see this this kind of like shell line up here, right? We've been kind of playing with. So yeah. I was trying to think of like a good tight end to put into this. So I put in Hawkinson, whatever it is, and then I this this is this is how you talk yourself into stuff that could that could happen, right? But what's wrong with doing this instead of playing this? Why don't we put Andrews in? And now I have two Baltimore's and one Atlanta. And then what we do is is swap Mills for Mr. Huntley. There you go. And there you have it. Look at you. You you got all this craziness going on. This is, I mean, seriously. Excuse me. Excuse me. I have Henry and McCaffrey. I have Chalk City. I don't know what anybody's (laughs) talking about. You got Henry and McCaffrey and nobody else that'll hit 5%. I think. Thank you very much. I love it. She's just the, there's your millionaire winner, right? And that's, that's the time to do it. This is the time of year to do it. Um, especially it. How, I don't mind the Mills thing the more that I thought about it because of how bad they've been against the pass. Oh, um, no, it's terrible. <laughs> and he just can't. Just get, no, I'm, I'm, you know, look, he may be terrible, but he's going to he's gonna have like 60 or $70 allocated to my life. So, yep, something like that. Yep. Something like that, right. Um, all right, guys. Well, good luck. It's going to be a fun weekend. Sheets will be live at, uh, tomorrow morning, right, Sheets? Yep. And, uh, don't forget, always good to use your crowns at the end of the year, especially if you've had a winning year. So, so do that. I've got hundreds of thousands of them. I've been saving up to do that. So that's cool. Um, and yeah, let's make it. Let's have a fun weekend, guys.